All right, let's do section five, metabolism. Foods, they are sources of energy-rich molecules. That's why we eat them. They are mainly a source of macromolecules, such as carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Degradative reactions, catabolism, break down molecules, and they tend to be exergonic or release energy. Then synthetic reactions, anabolism, build molecules, and they tend to be endergonic or consume energy, which makes sense. If we're breaking something down, we're releasing energy. If we're building something up, we're taking energy in to do that. Here is a diagram that will be explained as we move through the following slides. Metabolic pool. Glucose is broken down in cellular respiration. We just spent a lot of time talking about that. Fat. Fat molecules break down into glycerol and three fatty acids. That makes sense because that's what they're made up of. Amino acids break down into carbon chains and amino groups. Deamine, deamine, I have trouble with this word, guys, sorry. Deamination, uh, when NH2 is removed, occurs in the liver, um, and it results in poisonous ammonia, which is then quickly converted to urea, which our bodies can then get rid of in our urine. Different R groups from amino acids are processed differently. So depending on what type of amino acids are used in that protein, they're going to be broken down differently. Fragments either, uh, sorry, fragments enter respiratory pathways at uh, many different points. All metabolic compounds are part of the metabolic pool. Intermediates from respiratory pathways can be used for anabolism. Anabolism is the, is the synthetic reaction of metabolism. Carbohydrates start with acetyl-CoA, basically reversing glycolysis, but a different pathway. And fats, um, the G3P, is converted to glycerol, and acetyl groups are connected in pairs to form fatty acids. Anabolism continued. Proteins, they're made up of a combination of 20 different amino acids. Some amino acids can be synthesized by adults. However, uh, the other ones have to be um, eaten. They have to be consumed in some way. Our bodies can make 11 of the 20, but the other nine have to be eaten. Okay, a lot of times um, plant-based foods don't have all 20 of these amino acids in one single form. So if you are vegan, then you need to be sure that your diet contains varied protein sources so that you're sure to get all 20 of those necessary amino acids. Um, they have to be present in your diet, otherwise you'll start to, uh, to get sick more because you're not getting all the nutrients that you need. Energy organelles revisited. So we're going to just kind of look back a little bit on chloroplast. Um, there are a lot of similarities between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Uh, the organelles that do them are very similar. Okay, the structure of a chloroplast and the structure of a mitochondria are very similar. They have a, they have double membranes. They have inner um, areas where the chemical reactions occur. Uh, the chloroplasts have uh, internal membranes that form thylakoids, and mitochondria have inner membranes that form the cristae. They both use the electron transport chain. It's located in the thylakoid of chloroplast and in the cristae of uh, mitochondria. In photosynthesis, the electrons are energized um, and passed through the electron transport chain. They get their energy essentially from the sun. Um, in mitochondria, the electrons, which are energized, are removed from glucose. In both electron transport chains, um, establish an electrochemical gradient of hydrogen ions, and they use that concentration gradient to generate ATP. Uh, enzymes. Both use enzymes. In chloroplasts, the stroma have uh, enzymes that make the Calvin cycle run the way that it should. In mitochondria, the matrix contains enzymes that uh, are in charge of maintaining the citric acid cycle. Those enzymes just keep doing the cycle over and over and over and over again, and they are never consumed by those reactions. A flow of energy. Energy flows from the sun through chloroplasts to carbohydrates, then through the mitochondria to form ATP molecules. This flow of energy maintains biological organization at all levels from molecules to organisms to the biosphere. Some energy is lost with chemical transformations. So every time that um, we are transferring energy from one form to another, 
some of it is going to be lost as heat. And eventually, all of that solar energy, that energy that we captured from the sun, it gets transferred time after time after time, and eventually all of that energy is used up. It is all uh, released in the form of heat eventually. Um, because of that, we depend on a constant input of solar energy into our environment. There are chemical cycles within natural systems. All right, chloroplasts produce oxygen and carbohydrates, which are then used by the mitochondria to generate the energy that we need for life. Chloroplasts and mitochondria allow energy to flow through organisms and permit chemical cycling. So they, uh, these processes allow us to use elements over and over and over and over again. Here we have a picture, a diagram showing sunlight striking a chloroplast. It is producing glucose, producing uh, carbohydrates, which are then used in the mitochondria to make ATP. So that is it for the notes this chapter, guys. If you have any questions, let me know.